us are the important ones that an undergraduate student like most of you should know and understand, okay? So the content of this presentation, so basically I just have five topics and I think this slide is only 20 slides, but I, I we're going to delve into the details of these particular uh, subtopics that I'm going to discuss with you. So basically I'm going to start with an overview. I'm going to ask some of you what are your understanding, uh, what is your understanding of a, a related literature or review related literature or most of us call it RRL you know, for most of many researchers. Um, second, I'm going to discuss locating sources for the literature review. I'm going to talk about how are you going to look for pertinent resources you know, that you have to consider in writing your literature review. Second is how to read literature review to identify themes. It is very important as well because most of our students have a hard time you know, spotting the themes, knowing what are the important um, concepts that must be uh, included in the review of related literature. So I'm going to discuss this also. And of course, because it's constructing a literature review outline. And lastly, how to write the literature review. So I hope that this um, uh, webinar will give you at least the basics of writing a literature review, which most of uh, young researchers have a hard time doing, even young scholars like us, you know, young scholars who are uh, I mean, budding scholars like us who are writing papers, this, most of us, I think, would agree that this is the hardest part that uh, you will encounter in your uh, research paper writing. Okay, next slide. So, before anything else, may, may I ask uh, uh, someone from the audience to give me his idea of what literature review is? Anyone? Sorry, I have I uh, I'm a teacher, talaga, so I need participation. I don't want this webinar to be, you know, monopolized by me. Although that would be the case later on, but I want some participation on your part, at least at this part of the talk. Can someone share his or her view of what literature review is all about, or have you read anything about literature review? And I'm sure some of you have probably encountered or perhaps written a literature review. So I will call. <laughs> Can someone volunteer? Or you can just type your answer on the chat box and I'm going to read it. So that uh, this won't be as, you know, as threatening as it is. So I'll just be reading your chats, your idea. about what literature review is. Hey, sir. So sir. Are... Yes, ma'am. Hi, sir. Um, most of the participants are on the Facebook Live because we also have a Facebook Live streaming. I see, most, I see. Uh, yes. yes and then the people inside here are part of the YRC. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry, so I thought I'm gonna have more participants. Anyway, as a, uh, I think uh, overview of majors. So according to Ma'am Riana, it's overview of major things. Okay, does anyone have any idea? So perhaps we can proceed with the definition that I have, you know, have here in the presentation. So I'm sorry. So what is a literature review? Or for most of us, uh, many of us, uh, 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 many young researchers call this RRL, right? Review of Related Literature. And some formats would say Review of Related Literature and Studies. It right? depends on the kind of format that your school is using. But literature review is basically uh, uh, surveys books, scholarly articles, and any other sources relevant to a particular issue, area of research, or theory and by so doing, provides a description, summary, and critical evaluation of these works in relation to the research problem being investigated. Okay, Literature reviews are designed to provide an overview of sources you have explored while researching a particular topic and to demonstrate to your readers how your research 
fits within a larger field of study. So basically, uh, ang basic definition ng mga, ng mga sadyante before, even I, when I was an undergrad, is it's just that an extrapolation of previous studies that are related to your to your study, and it's just you know a concoction of these studies, and uh, that's it. No, that's what our traditional belief of review of native literature. But technically, it's not. No, uh, literature review is um, perhaps aside from chapter four, which is the results and discussion. Literature review is somehow the meat, no, of the of any research because it foregrounds your research it talks about the current scholarship the current conversation the current debate that is happening in your field most particularly about your topic and it gives you an overview of what has been done in that research area so if you if you're able to read and uh, comprehensively review lit literature or publish works okay so then you will have a full grasp or full understanding of what your topic is all about okay so this definition there are more definition but i find this definition quite encompassing so i put emphasis on critical evaluation because it is not just copy and paste it's not just you know a matter of summarizing paraphrasing the results of research studies that you have read but rather it's an evaluation critical evaluation of these research articles or other published materials that you have read because it would require um, your uh, critical understanding of what the topic is all about. You have to see patterns, you have to see the concepts, you have to compare and contrast the results of different studies. Sometimes there are studies that are conflicting. How are you going to reconcile these, conf uh, the, these conflicts between and among research articles? And how do you find your research article, uh, your own research fit into that? research area that's why i also i also emphasize how your research fits within a larger field of study this is according to think to think a in 2014 okay so let's try to see the purposes of rl bakit nga ba tayo nag-rl nag review related literature why should we do related literature laging sinasabi yan ng mga ang hirap naman po mag-review related literature ang unti po nang namin nababasa ang unti namin ang aming nakikita so uh, doing a review for literary literature is in itself a challenge in doing a research. In fact, many of us believe that the beginning of research uh, starts with identifying the problem, but actually it's not. What we do first is we do review of related literature. Although we have a certain uh, areas in our head, you know, we, have, we have to identify a certain area of inquiry or research that we have in our heads or a particular research area that we're interested in. At. But what we actually do before we formulate a problem is we first do a review of related literature. So, ano nga bang literature? These are published materials. No, published materials can be either books, uh, professional books, academic articles, uh, con conference proceedings, etc. And we do this because we want to be acquainted with the current debate. You no, know, the current debate in our field, the current situation in our field. What is there already? No, ano na ang meron sa field na ito at ano ang wala pa. And that's the time when we read comprehensively this review of related literature. That's the time we see the gap. Okay, and that, that's the time when we see that there are things that are lacking in the literature and there's the idea that comes into our head, oh, I'm going to do this because it has not been done yet in the Philippines or in this particular context. Okay, so that's the beauty of doing related literature prior to the formulating your own research problems because it foregrounds your uh, research at the same time it gives you a big picture of the current situation in your field or in your specific topic so first the purpose of rl is to demonstrate your expertise on the on the topic of course if you're not an expert into the field it is very hard for you to do an rl because when you read research articles that are beyond your expertise chances are you will not be able to understand them and if you don't understand a research article you you, you won't be able to summarize or critically evaluate these articles so basically research, uh, related literature is a way of demonstrating your expertise in the field okay so um most of us have a uh, uh, are have a hard time you know, uh writing this because it requires not just critical evaluation but good 
writing skills as well, which we'll be discussing later on. So, in fact, when uh, as a, as a referee myself, as a journal referee, as a a peer reviewer of some articles, no, I really look forward to reading RRLs. In fact, sometimes I judge uh, the worth of a paper based on the RRL. Sometimes the results are good. No? The, the results are very good, actually. But sometimes researchers fail to foreground their research and they fail to comprehensively present a review-related literature. And it, it's hard on your part as a reviewer that you, you can see you, you cannot see the, the current picture that is happening in that field. So how do I know that this particular research is actually original? And what makes it different from the rest of the published articles that have been reviewed already? So if you have a comprehensive review of liter literature, as a reviewer myself, no, I, I, am, uh, I am confident that the research is novel, it's original, and it, and it, con and it contributes to the current pool of knowledge. That's the that's the the basically the the goal of research. No, some lagi siya sabi na mga sujante. Sir, bakat ba kailangan may research sa lahat ng courses? Bakat kailangan uh, magproduce ng thesis at the end of the uh, uh, four year degree course or five year degree course or even at the masters and PhD level? But of course, let's exclude the graduate school. No, but why do undergraduates need to produce research? That's the question. Remember that the goal of many courses is not just to train you to become professionals, but also to become not just consumers of knowledge. Kasi pag tayo, ano, um, oftentimes, ang tingin, sa, tingin natin sa ating mga sarili or tingin ng, na, natin sa, sa, sa atin is, are just consumers of knowledge. Meaning to say, we just consume what is ever published, what is ever there in the book. You know? So in, in the books, these are uh, basically uh, knowledge consumption. But the government, particularly in the higher education institution, we want to be engaged and to be involved in the knowledge production. Meaning to say, we should not just be consumers of knowledge, but also knowledge production. Hence, one of the core functions of many universities in the Philippines is research. And that includes not just the faculty members, but also its students. So, dapat daw, before you graduate, hindi mo lang daw alam yung mga tinuro sa'yo ng iyong courses or ng, yung, ng, ng courses sa'yo ng iyong mga teachers, but also you have this ability and enthusiasm to contribute to the current pool of knowledge. And the only way that you can contribute to the current pool of knowledge is by doing a research. That's why I'm very glad when I see uh, your organization, uh, Young Researcher Circle. It's very good. No, I haven't seen uh, a research-oriented um, club, student club or student organization. Most of them are, of course, dedicated to specific courses. For example, when I was in, in uh, when I was an undergraduate student, I was a former president of the English Council of English Enthusiasts, which is the organization of young English majors in our college. But I haven't seen a, uh, a circle or a student organization dedicated for uh, research. And I'm very happy and very glad to see that you are doing this. No? You are inviting speakers from different parts of the Philippines. And this is a very good step. This is a great head start to many of you. I hope uh, those who are not able to come in the Zoom meeting is watching right now because uh, you will be benefiting a lot in this. Because when I was an, 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 an undergraduate student, I was not able to attend these kinds of webinars. Of course, COVID-19 is, I mean, pandemic is not the thing, the thing of the past, but I mean, hardly that, that we are able to attend such uh, webinar, I mean, uh, workshops and series of workshops that are intended to educate you on how to write a research uh, paper. Okay? So, really sorry. So, next, synthesize the current conversation, debate, scholarship on your topic. As I was saying uh, a while ago, the purpose of RRL is for you to synthesize, to give, us, to give your readers a background of what is happening in the field, in your research area, so that they will see, oh, okay, this is the, the picture. This is, this is the current pool of knowledge that is present in, in your field. And what, what is now lacking? Okay, So how are you now going to contribute to this current pool of knowledge? Will your research contribute to this current pool of knowledge or not? Okay, And 
And that's the purpose of another purpose of RRL. So secondly, once you have um, synthesized all this, I mean, lastly, pala, sorry. Once you have synthesized this, uh, this RRL, this publish, uh, the scholarship you know, behind your topic or behind your research problem, then that's the time when you can see the gap. And that's the time when you see the problem. And when you see the problem, that's the time you want to solve that solution. And that's basically one of the functions of research. To see the gap, ano ba ang kulang? What is lacking between theory and practice? What is lacking, uh, lacking in terms of theoretical underpinnings or uh, the the theoretical um, uh, frameworks that are currently available in the field? Or you can even suggest to change or to, to change or uh, give some suggestion that is that uh, I mean probably totally change the entire understanding of the topic okay so my laptop is I think I'm gonna mom wait now because my laptop is low but uh, wait lamang po I'm gonna Hello, stop sir. sharing Saksa ko lang siya. Wait lang. Okay, so I'm really sorry for that. I thought my laptop is plugged. It's... It wasn't, but anyway, so let's proceed again to the next. So, ayon, uh, uh, yun po ang goal talaga ng review of related literature. Aside from synthesizing the current pe current pool of not the current debate uh, that's happening in your in your field, you also the, the goal is really to identify the gap. No, in fact, uh, if you look at the uh, Swales, uh, John Swales um, genre of research article. There is there is a part there that's identifying the gap. You know? uh, before you uh, you you introduce your topic, which is uh, which is occupying the niche, you have to identify the gap because that's the only time when you can inject um, your problem. You know? in fact, when you uh, sometimes doing a very good RRL uh, is uh, I mean gives you an under, uh, gives your audience an, uh, an understanding of why is there a need for your research study. In other words. It is the background. It gives you the purpose of the study, or the what do you call that in your chapter one to five. What, uh, ma'am? Excuse me. Do you, do you still follow the chapter one to five format in thesis writing, or do you follow the IMRD format? I still the chapters one to five. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Thank you, po, sir. So yes, the chapter one to five talaga na sinusulat natin. Basically, in chapter one into na yon is RRL yon, no? Lahat yon. And na lang siya, ginawa lang team, no? so that it will be divided into the background of the study, significance of the study, etc. But basically, those two chapters of the chapter 1 to 5 format can be summarized into introduction, which is the review-related literature in the introduction, method, results, and discussion format. Okay? I'm really sorry for that. So next, so what are the myths about RRL? I, I, uh, this, these are... The common misconception, no? uh, common misconception of many undergraduate students and perhaps even master students or I mean graduate students, no, uh, about RRL. So it's not a copy paste tradition, no. Like I I've heard this many a times in my students. Ito yun napinag madali kasi copy mo lang naman yung mga nabasa mo, etc. etc. No, it is in fact uh, RRL is the the first part that I. I a researcher, I mean a reviewer or a evaluator of research would read and that's the time when we see evidence of plagiarism. Yung po yung kauna-unahang part, nakita na kita na, oh, this is plagiarized already. And you can see it, no? For, I'm not an expert yet, no? Perhaps I might go there, no? That's why why I'm doing this and I'm continuing my, my knowledge about research. 
because I, I want to achieve that certain level of expertise. But if you are doing research for the longest time, I've been in, in uh, I've been researching for like six or seven years now since 2011. I was a student in the La Salle University, 2012. I've been exposed to a lot of you know doing a, a lot of research, doing research, writing research papers, presenting papers, publishing papers, and now evaluating research papers as a referee. You can easily see that a particular research is done haphazardly by just simply looking at their RRL. Kaya malaking pitfall yan. In fact, when I sit as a panel of, of uh, thesis defense in our university, I always look at the RRL. I am very particular with the RRL because when you study in De La Salle, they are very particular with that. In fact, in their PhD program, you cannot proceed to your dis uh, pro dissertation writing proper if you will not write an integrative paper. And an integrative paper is a comprehensive literature review of the supposed topic that you're trying to propose as your dissertation topic. So ganun And if your panel uh, is not contented with your with your integrated paper, in, then that's, you cannot proceed to um, formal dissertation writing. That's why mga bata, to our, to our audience, to our student uh, teachers, it is very important that you write this uh, uh, well, this RRL, because it becomes sometimes the pitfall of many researchers. So it's not an annotated bibliography. So I'm sure some of you have, have done this in your in your undergraduate courses where your professor requires uh, required you to, to write an annotated bibliography instead of just a bibliography or a reference section. It's not, no. It's not a summary of what the result is all about or what, what this particular research article is all about but rather it's a critical evaluation it's, it's, it's a critical synthesis of what you've read you know in 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 your course of reviewing your literature next summary of articles that you have read again it's not the summary of research articles i i uh i i read a lot of uh research work of my students and akala talaga nila sinasummarize lang na they will read a particular research article they will summarize it by as if writing an abstract yung lalagay nila yung objectives ano yung methodology na ginamit sino yung respondents and ano yung results and then next paragraph yun ulit hindi siya extrapolation ng summary of articles na nakaparagraph one by one but you have to see the connection between and among them no you have to see the pattern how many research articles are saying that this uh, are are saying I mean are on the positive side. Which articles are saying on are saying that the results are negative, something like that. So you have to combine, analyze each of them. What are they trying to say? You, know, you you must be able to spot the differences and the lapses because not all research papers that are published are perfect. You no, know, it it is a known fact in the field that although these research are published and has undergone rigorous review, peer reviewing, it's still not perfect. There will be some lapses in terms of, say, methodology. There will be some lapses in, in critical review of the RRL. There will be some lapses in, perhaps, in the results in discussion, or perhaps in recommendations, or in the implications. So, hindi siya talaga siya perfect. And as a researcher, you must be able to spot these strengths and weaknesses of the research article that you have read. Okay, so let's now proceed to the next. If you have questions, if I'm going fast, too fast, sorry, you can you can just say, sir, can you please <laughs> pause a bit? So I, I have this, I saw this quotation and I, I would like to share it with you, a quotation from William Kennedy. And it says that aspiring writers should read the entire canon of literature review that precedes them back to the Greeks up to the current issue of the Paris Review. So you see how review related literature uh, requires you to delve deeper into the history of your topic. No, as dapat talaga you begin with the seminal works. Eh, that's that's oftentimes ako sa dami kong nabasa. Well, I can only talk uh, on behalf of the field that I belong to the applied linguistics field you no know, sa dami ko nabasa mga research articles uh, they will always begin with um 
the seminal works. No? Kaya sta- tama yung sinabi ni William Kennedy, you have to dig deeper from the Greeks, which is the ancient civilization, up to the Paris Review, which is now the current, or what we call the modern history. Parang ganun, that's how big, or that's how huge reviewing of uh, reviewing literature is because it's not just a matter of I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna pick two or three research articles that is relevant or pertinent to my research and then I'm gonna set that I'm gonna uh, intentionally exclude those who do not uh, belong or do not say the same thing as my results uh, as, as the, the same as the results of my study so hindi ganon so dapat is an honest review whether this particular research will i mean is i i mean follow the same pattern as your research or kung siya ba ay kapareho din ng results mo or kung hindi so mahalaga na makita natin yung all sides of the literature review again sabi ko nga it's a big picture of what's happening in the field or in your current scholarship or debate so what does an RRL, RRL do to your research? Ano ba ang ginagawa ng RRL to your research? Sabi nga, laging sinasabi, sir, bakit pa kailangan pang mag-RRL? I think I already told you some of them, no? So place your research project within an existing knowledge base. Yan, sinisituate na kayo. Ah, okay, ito pala, ito pala ang uh, nangyayari ngayon sa field. So asan ka ngayon? Asan ngayon ang research mo dyan? Saan mo ngayon ipapasok ang research mo? So, does your research belong to that field or to that current knowledge base? Or is your research already existing? Is still, uh, meron, kailangan pa ba natin magkaroon ng inquiry or mag-research doon? Kasi nagawa naman na siya. Yun. So, trace the conceptual threads, themes, debates, and questions related to your topic. Ito na yung sinasabi ko. As you read along this literature, these articles, these books, etc., whatever sources that you have. As you go along with this, you will you, you will be identify, you will be uh, seeing threads. Ano yung, ano yung common theme? Ano yung common trajectory? Ano yung direction? Halimbawa, ah, ang direction pala nila ngayon is towards ano pala? Halimbawa ay, for example, sa grammar, if you look at gra- grammar studies, it begins really with uh, this prescriptivist type of uh, grammar teaching, no? Talagang this is the standard English. And then as you go along, read the debate. In, nung dumating na ang Sikachu, ng world Englishes, nagkaroon ng debate whether English is a monolithic language, whether English is is owned by many native speakers until such time that in 1985, Brad Sikachu introduced the world Englishes concept. Nagkaroon na ng different trajectory yung ano, yung yung research naging na yung prescriptivist so nagkaroon na ng two school of schools of thought no sa grammar teaching may prescriptivist may descriptivist yung mga guardians of the language at yung mga understanding in open sa language change so you can see the themes and debates kasi pag na miss mo yun hindi mo maintindihan ang problema tapos pag uh, pag nagkataon pa dahil mga expert naman nagre-review ng research mo papahiya ka na o ba hindi mo include dito yan no, ay, kasama po ba yun? No, sinabi na yan sa isang research. Hindi mo ba nabasa? Yun ang pitiful nun eh. If you failed to see, uh, re- uh, if you failed to review the important literatures in your field, chances are you are blindsided. No? Hindi mo nakita pala yung ano, yung isang research na eh, hindi, hindi mo na binasa, hindi mo na include. Ay, nandun pala yung result na kapatu- kap- kapareho pala nun yung result ng paper mo. So, hindi na pala bago yung paper mo. Okay, so ang hirap niyan kasi sasabihin niyo, so ang dami ng publish niyo ni. Eh. Ang dami ng publish research material sa sa aking field. Minsan dalo kasi ang problema ng ng isang researcher eh. Kapag bago yung kanyang research, ang unti ng RRL niya, wala siyang maisulat. So mahirap din talaga 'yon kasi ano yung saan ka kukuha ng pang-support sa mga research findings mo sa chapter 4. Pero ang ang pangit naman sa isang research na well studied, ang lawak na niya, ang lawak na ng debate, hindi mo na alam kung saan ka pupunta. Kaya nga, like, like what I've said, RRL requires a lot of patience, reading and critical thinking. So hindi ka talaga makaka-forward kung kung hindi ka talaga magbabasa ng matiyagang magbabasa. Kaya lagi kong sinasabi sa mga estudyante ko, please, before you submit to me a proposal or research proposal, make sure that you have read fully understand the the current debate in your particular research area. Kasi pag nagtanong ako ng ganito, hindi na nalang masagot. Minute to say, hindi sila nagbasa. At yun ang ginagawa kong tip sa inyo mga bata. When I was an undergraduate, 
when I was an undergraduate student, uh, ang, um, sa curriculum namin, fourth year, first semester ang thesis writing. You know what? Because I, 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 am, I have a fear, I have this particular fear that I might not graduate because I might fail, no? Just because of thesis writing. Kasi kinakatakutan siya eh. Makakinig mo yung mga singers mo. Thesis, thesis, puro na nasa library. Parang, ay, naku, ang hirap pala ng thesis. And marinig mo eh, mga bumabagsak sa defense. May mga, may mga, may mga bumabagsak sa defense. So sabi, pinaghandaan ko siya. Uh, Bakasyon pa lang ng third year ako. I already read a lot. Meron akong topics sa na naiisip ko. Parang, I want to work on English for specific purposes. So what I did was to read a lot of books. Uh, I mean, not books technically, but yeah, books in the library and research articles published no, na, 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 that na, na related sa akin. Although hindi pa naman ako ganun talaga kahusay na magbasa at maghanap ng mga resources, pero pinilit ko yung sarili ko na magbasa. In fact, I was able to be part of a Yahoo group, a member of a Yahoo group na mga ESP enthusiasts, and I was able to... Uh, catch the attention of a, of a professor from Poland, I think, na nagbigay ng advice sa proposal ko. And when the first semester kicks in, you know, I think it was June or July, when we are asked to submit a, a title, and then na-frame ko na yung title, alam ko na meron akong, meron akong uh, reason, uh, uh, amount, reasonable amount of research articles na nabasa, alam ko na yung methodology kong gagawin, meron na rin akong instrument na gagamitin, alam ko na rin yung target participant squad kung ilan. When I uh, when I submit the paper, the, the title of my proposal, tinanong ako ng church, ng aming advisor, uh, sinong respondents mo, paano mo gagawin, etc. Et Nasagot ko lahat. And I was, uh, it was approved, no? It was just one title, one attempt. It was approved that same moment. Not because uh, nagustuhan yung siguro yung topic, but I was able to answer the questions ng no, no, research advisor. Kasi siyempre, as a research advisor now, I now, underst I, I now understand bakit ganun kahigpit yung dati, dati namin teacher. Kasi laging reject yung mga title. Reject, reject. Pero na niyan, hindi na yun bago. So na-realize ko as a research advisor now, ayaw nga pala, no? before you approve the research of your, the research proposal of your students, at least the title, bago mo siya i-approve na mag-work siya doon, kailangan talagang tanongin kung alam na ba nila ang kusino respondents nila, Alam na ba nila yung in, saan sila kukuha ng instruments? Can it be applied in the, in the setting that you want to do it? ba? So mga ganun. Kapag nasagot yun ng bata, ako nag-approve agad ako pag alam niya yung gagawin. Pero pag hindi niya alam ang gagawin, talagang mahigpit ako. Even at the middle na ng semester, wala pang approved yung title lang mga bata sa akin. So magkakaiba naman po tayo ng, ng way no, ng, of doing this research. Sa iba't ibang university, iba't iba yung style nila ng approving or ano, meron, meron pa sila mga pro proposal defense, meron naman lahat yan sa university kahit sa amin. But these are the experience that I want to share with you, how how difficult it is to come up with a good research paper. So it begins with a good comprehensive review of related literature. So trace the theme, the concept, etc. So situate the study within a historical context or theoretical perspective. Kaya nga part ng RRL yung tinatawag ating uh, theoretical framework. So what are the theoretical underpinnings that surround your topic? Ano yung mga a theory, yung mga frameworks na na nag na nag na may kinalaman sa iyong research study because it it will foreground your research and it will guide your research on how to go about your 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 research problem, how to answer your research questions. Okay? Ako, sa totoo lang when I when I write even before Hindi ko alam na ma-apply ko rin pala yan sa research writing. Nung sa mga creative writing, yung mga tipong essay, I always begin with a historical perspective. Kasi may, ako, I'm supposed to be a history, I, I'm supposed to be a history major. Kaso nga lang, nung nag-apply nag, nag ako sa university namin, na, na, na phase out na yung social st studies major, BS Ed, dahil wala na doon nag enroll for the last three years. So it was phased out. So I, looking at the uh, uh, prospectus, sabi ko mag-English major na lang ako kasi Parang yun lang kaya ko, hindi ko kaya mag-math, hindi ako magaling sa math, hindi ako magaling sa science, hindi ako magaling memorize. So I ended up, you know, in the English major, uh, BS and English major. And then, yeah, when I write, even in, in reviewing literature review, I find it easy when I do historical narrative. No, madali siyang isulat kapag nagsimula ka sa kaunan. How, how did it uh, begin? How did the, the topic came about? No, paano siya nagsimula as a, a small field 
until it becomes the big big field that we know it today. No, so nagsimula ako historic. Ang, ang bilis magsulat. Pag nagsim, para ka, para lang kasing nagkukwento ka, nag-narrate ka ng nangyari before. So, at saka meron, para na rin siya nagigis siyang, what you call this, an outline already that you begin with the 60s, you begin with the 70s, and, and then 80s, etc. until the present. So, medyo madaling mag-narrate. Although not all researchers are like that, most of them uh, use thematic no, or, or uh, thematic style of writing. At sa kaya nga, maganda rin magbasa ng RRL kasi doon kayo magkakaroon ng idea paano ba, nila mag, paano ba sila mag-review literature. Under the theory of uh, noticing restructuring, alam nyo ba na we learn best in writing? We learn to write by reading. no And how do we do that? Ako ang ginagawa ko sa mga sadyante ko para hindi ako mahirap magturo. Yung napag-aralan namin sa Lasal, I think Ma'am Nia would remember this, the noticing restructuring hypothesis. When we, instead of them teaching how to write, we teach them to, I mean, we, we let them to discover how to write. So halimbawa, instead of teaching them the genre of RRL, I let them read at least 10 articles. And then tinamo kung ano yung pattern na ginagawa niya. Ay, sir, ganito sila. Oh, seven of them started with historical. Oh, di ganun ang gawin mo. No? Hindi naman masama yun eh. As a researcher, young researcher, to somehow emulate, hindi naman copy, you know, emulate the way these brilliant scholars write, walang masama doon. And then later on, kapag marunong ka na talaga magsulat, doon mo na makikita yung style mo. No? Doon mo na ma-adapt yung sarili mong style. At sa pagbabasa, doon mo din ma-adapt yung style ng mga authors na binasa mo. Okay? So, kaya importante na magbasa ka din talaga ng RRL because it's uh, it's also a way of discovering how these brilliant authors, scholars write their RRL. Doon kayo magkakakuha ng mga tips. Ay, ganito pala siya magsulat. Totoo lang, I, I never thought that I would be uh, uh, somehow be good at writing research paper. No? Kaya mo magsulat. Everybody can write but not all people are writers. No? Sabi nga nilang ganun. Kaya, lang, kaya natin lahat magsulat. Pero to be able to write publishable work, to be able to write uh, publication-worthy thesis, hindi, hindi, hindi siya madali. No? Kaya nga lagi nagiging pitfall yan sa, sa mga university professors or teachers, instructors. In, maraming teacher ang hindi napopromote because they lack research. And bakit hindi dahil hindi sila magaling mag-research, nagiging pitfall na, na yung pagsulat na mahirap magsulat ng research. Maraming idea mga professors or teachers na mga problema sa kanilang field. Pero pag sulat, may medyo problematic na, you no. Know? So again, you can do, you can uh, isa 'yun sa uh, per, sa ano to, sa ginagawa ng RRL, it situate your study within the historical context. Next, identify the need for your research. Ayan na. When you see the gap, ito na po yung problema. Ito ang meron ngayon eh. So ito pa ang wala. So, ma-identify mo ngayon na merong need doon sa gap na yun. Hence, ang nangyayari, na-state mo na ngayon yung significance of the study. Why is there a need for my study? Because the RRL says so. My review for the literature said that there is a gap between this theory and practice. So, I'm gonna study it. That's it. Okay? Choose possible procedures and methods to use in your study. Ayan. Doon yung kikita pag nagreviewology na ginamit nagpaisay experimental siya nag-experimental gumamit siya ng ANOVA gumamit siya ng T-test one-tailed or two-tailed uh, yung iba naman nag-survey lang yung iba nag-focus group discussion doon mo makita yung methodology no? in fact when you do research uh, advisable na mag-triangulate kayo when you do uh, uh, when you when your methodology would require um, two or more methodology or two or more sources of data. Yun, 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 yun na ngayon yung trend ngayon na pwedeng, pag nag-survey ka, tapos na. So, kailangan mong sundan pa ng focus group discussion para, para ma-corroborate ma yung result ng survey mo ng focus group discussion. Okay? So, dun ka na makakita. Dun, dun mo makikita, ah, ganito palang method ang gagawin ko. Hindi pa ito nagagawa sa Pilipinas. Hindi pa ito nagagawa sa mga elementary students. Hindi pa ito nagagawa sa mga English major. So you can do that. You can adapt. And you can tweak naman. You know, ang methodology, ang paggamit ng methodology, hindi naman yan plagiarism. Because in fact, mas maganda nga, nagayahin mo lang ang methodology ng ibang research because sound, especially if kung sound yung methodology nilang ginamit. 
no so it, it will make your life easier if you're going to follow how the how they conduct you know, their research how they gather data and how they were able to to collect those data and what are the instruments that they use in collecting those data okay so narrow and further refine your research question until the research is presented or signed by your advisor or by your dean, research, your research is not complete yet. Even at the middle or perhaps at the last part of your, even at the, at your, in your defense, during your defense, malirealize mo may kulang pa rin. Sabihin ni panel, o oh, tanggalin mo na yung research question na yun, hindi mo na siya nasagot eh. Or sabihin niya, o oh, kulang, hindi mo, hindi mo, uh, yung, yung may sinagot, may, may dinagdag ka sa research mo na wala naman sa research question mo. O didagdag mo na lang tong research question mo kasi sayang naman yung result na nakuha mo. No, may mga ganun. So, research is a work in progress. As long, even, no, un, un, unless it's published already or signed by your dean, no, as uh, approved for impartial fulfillment, fulfillment of the requirements for the degree, then it's done. But, no, until such time, no, hindi pa siya polished. Even at the latter part of your defense, pwede yung pa rin siyang mabago. Minsan meron pa nga kaming, meron akong estudyante na meron siyang kiniklaim dun sa result of the study niya na hindi supported ng RRL. So what I did is, I require her, no, you are claiming this and you don't have any backing of an existing study because the claim is very big, no? They say that there is a big improvement in the achievement of this and that. So what is your proof? No, is there any related literature that would support the result of your paper? So naghanap siya. So, dinagdag niya yung sa RRL niya. Okay? So, it narrows down your paper. At the same time, further refine your research question. Okay, next. So, additionally, as you complete your study, you may want to return to the literature and compare and contrast the findings from your study with what you, lear what, what you learned from past research. Mga bata, like what I've said a while ago, ang RRL ay hindi lamang parang historical perspective ng nangyayari or nang, nangyari sa field mo, kundi magagamit mo siya. Ito hindi ko malimutan talaga. I cannot forget this. I, I was able to understand it when I was writing in, 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 in my undergrad. Sabi ng prof namin nung college, um, gandahan yung gawa ng RRL kasi magagamit nyo yan. Magagamit nyo yung sinasabi nyo pag nag-discuss na kayo ng chapter 4 and 5, pag gantong result, pag ganyan ang lumabas, pag mas magaling ang mga babae kaysa sa lalaki, etc. etc. ang mga ganong result. And I said, oh, why no? Because when you defend, although as researchers, we are, of course, we have the freedom to express what we, what we see no, in, our, in our data. But no, as a researcher also, you must know and you must be honest enough that it's not enough that you just theorize what your data tell you. But it has, it must be supported by current studies or past studies that is related or that are related to your topic kailangan na ma-corroborate kumbaga sa ebidensya di ba sa sa ano sa criminal criminal case ang 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 ano ang level ng proof is proof beyond reasonable doubt kapag administrative case or civil case ata i think it's uh, ano to clear and convincing evidence lang. So, sa research, dapat, as much as possible, ano, at least sa, sa mga makorroborate yung, yung witnesses mo. Kung may witness kang isa, katingin mo, tama na ba yung witness na, oh, ako, siya, na, oh, nakita ko siya ang pumatay. Is it enough to convict a criminal or, uh, or someone who is uh, accused of murder, for example? So, dahil proof beyond reasonable doubt, dapat mataas yung level ng evidence. Dapat i-corroborate pa yung o may isa pang witness, may isa pang witness, nakita siya, nakita siya. And that's the only time the judge decides, oh, okay, siya nga yung killer, etc. Ganon din sa, no, sa research, no, sa, sa, sa findings, sa results and discussion. It must be supported by current and past studies so that uh, ma makorroborate naman, no, ma ma masuportahan yung mga claims mo na hindi lang ikaw ang nagsasabi, no. Kaya nga, di ba, may mga disclaimer lagi tayo, according to some, the study of yeah, kasi nagkakaroon ng, ano bang kahalagahan nun? Nagkakaroon ng credibility yung claim mo. Ah, supported pala. Kayong claim niya pala supported by facts. O di at least confident ka as a researcher na this research is good because it has the backing of scholars from around the world. Okay? From, 
from from the scholars that are uh, that are instrumental in the seminal work in this particular field something like that okay next so now the very first thing of course that you must know i think this is the skill that most of us of oftentimes overlook is how to locate sources uh ewan ko kasi hindi talaga naman talaga nato na ituturo technically no ng mga teachers i, I do not want to say uh, to to uh say na ito yung uh, case sa lahat ng universities but sometimes no kasi ang research naman is in, sometimes in the curriculum one sem lang just one sem lang sa tinetik, talaga nagmamadali na yung professor na instead na discuss pa to isa-isa, talagang diretso na sa ganito ganyan. Kasi especially now that research research has been taught in 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 senior high school, so kami mga college professor or teachers ay nag assume na you have the you have the full grasp, if not the full, but some of a, a good grasp of what research is all about, qualitative, quantitative, data gathering procedure, and especially doing RL. And to our surprise, hindi rin naman pala no, I'm not saying na may, may kamali ng senior high school, but perhaps nag-expect lang kami kasi may dalawang courses ata sa senior, I, I do not know, may, basta alam ko may course, hindi lahat ng strand merong course sa res, na research, pero you will get surprised na even doing related literature review, hindi nila masyadong alam. And siguro, because nasa onset pa lang naman ng, ng, ng implementation ng K-12, siguro marirefine pa naman siya. No? So, Look, how do you look, locate resources? Basically, dalawa na normal, dalawa naman yung ating ano, ano, yung print and non-print. Okay, so it's a good thing that you are now living in the internet age where doing research is, I think, much, much easier no, as compared to our generation. Because during our generation, it, although my internet na, ang internet noon ay 30 pesos per hour sa computer, tapos 5 pesos pa ang per page ng printing. No, ganun ka mahal nung panahon namin eh ang baon mo lang 20 isang araw so how are you going to 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 do research in the computer shops no wala pa nung hindi, hindi pa uso ng mga PC sa bahay mayaman lang so we, we still do library work no o, card catalog na yan etc etc pero ngayon ang dami ng repository of data na mga databases na available sa internet most of them are free pa no, and some of you, many many university universities nowadays subscribe to these e-journals, no, e-books. So just by using your credentials, your university library credentials, you can now search even the even those articles that are for sale, no. Lalo na yung mga hindi mga for sale, but may fees, no. Pag bababasahin yung pag-download niyo, mga publish na mga high impact journals like Oxford, Cambridge, ang mahal ng mga articles dyan. So, pero kung nakasubscribe naman yung university nyo, you just log into your university library and then use their credentials and you can download them for free na. But still, sabi nga, ito pa rin yung pinaglalaban ng maraming scholars na bakit kailangan ibenta ang knowledge? No, hindi ba dapat knowledge should, should be disseminated to as many people as we want? And if you want, the reason why publication is there because we want to disseminate information, right? The results of our research should be disseminated to the, to to at most people na interesado sa research natin pero kung siya ay babayaran at mahal then it limits the access of many scholars around the world to this critical research na maaari ding maging daan para magkaroon ng maganda pang research sa panahon pero marami naman nag-argue na kung wala daw bayad yan paano yung mga funding ng research saan kukuha ng funding ng research so nagtatalatali yung mga scholars ngayon merong scholars na Free access. May mga scholars naman na hindi. Limitado dapat. Hindi dapat free access. Dapat may bayad pa rin. Kasi doon kinukuha ng mga university yung funding nila sa mga downloads na yun. Ano. Pero I'm, I'm for free access. No? Especially kung government funded naman halimbawa ang isang research. It should be ano eh. Kasi kung government funded, meaning to say the, the government use public funds. So it should be for the public consumption, right? So bakit mo sisingilin ngayon ng mahal ang mga articles na yun? In fact, it should be published for free, it should be downloaded for free, no, etc. So internet, so it, there are educational electron, uh, electronic databases such as ERIC, EBSCO, Procrest, sometimes even Wiley, Cambridge, and Oxford, kapag medyo mga siguro luma, may, may mga pro, may mga ano sila, eh, hindi ko alam kung pro ba ang tawag doon. There are times na first 100 people to download free yung mga first articles na publish nila. May mga ganun. Ano? Pero ang technique dyan mga bata, I don't know if Probably siguro yung iba sa inyo nagawa na to. 
and some of your professors probably did this already, email the authors and they will give you the copy. Promise. They will not, ang normally brilliant scholars ay hindi madadamot. Just email them, introduce yourself. For example, you saw an article published in Cambridge. Ay, ano siya? Kailangan siyang, ano to? What do you call this? Kailangan siyang, may bayad siya. Kunin mo yung correspondence, yung email niya, and then email mo siya. And then introduce yourself. Good, uh, dear Professor, ganyan. I am Ferdinand Rosa, a scholar from ganyan, ganyan. A young scholar from Mindanao State University. I'm currently conducting a research. I saw your paper. I think your paper is pertinent to my research. It is with great honor if you would give me a copy of this, etc. And they will reply. You know, I did that for me four times already. Four times. And these authors are known authors in the field. You know? And then they they will they are candid enough, kind enough to give you the the copy of their research. So at least hindi na babaya, di ba? Naka correspond mo pa yung ano, yung yung author. Published works, yan. I want commenting. Ito kasi ang mahal ng subscription dito kaya many state universities have a hard time subscribing to this. Tapos hindi naman binabasa ng mga estudyante. Even professors hindi na rin nila binabasa. Kaya minsan Magkano ba subscription sa isang journal? Depende pa yun kung anong journal. Depende kung ilang issue sila meron. Ang journals pa merong E and, e and ano, hard copies. So, kaya nahirap alam mga universities kasi ang hirap mag-subscribe, wala namang din nagkukonsume nung, nung, nung subscription nila. no? But anyway, dapat marunong uh, alam mo kung saan maghahanap ng, 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 ng articles. So, halim, uh, ang ginawa ko before is I asked my professor, halimbawa, if you're research, if you are interested in curriculum, ano bang journal or measurement and evaluation? Ano bang mga pioneer? Ano bang mga journals dapat ang dapat kung puntahan? Ano yung mga tinatawag natin high impact journals na na involved sa measurement and evaluation or assessment? So dun ka magahanap, no? Kasi ang ang danger mga bata sa internet kasi is there are so many uh, sources. Hindi mo na alam kung reliable sources ba sila. But always remember, mga bata, that your journals should, I mean, your articles or your books should come from reputable publications. My list ang ched niyan. My list ang, ang ano ba yan? Ang ISI, yung, yung mga organization na yan, yung, yung Thomson Reuters, meron silang list ng mga high-impact journals. Kasi mamaya, may nakita ka ng study, pero publish naman siya sa isang bogus journal. No, mahirap yun. Mahirap mag-cite ng study na published sa bogus journal. Kapag nakita yan, if you submit your paper for publication at nakita yan ng, ng, ng editors, ng publisher, automatic, even if your research is good, is great, it will automatically be rejected. Kasi may mga sinahit kang bogus na, may mga sinahit kang papers na publish sa mga bogus journals. And it does not, give credence to your study it does not give credibility to your study if the resources that you use came from bogus journals mahirap yon okay so it it nagigiy yung sanhi ng rejection sometimes ng paper so how do you know that these are authentic non bogus journals you, there is a list published by by ched to serve as a guide for for faculty of course students can use them and I think Thomson and Reuters, ISI, public. Mayroon namang listahan nun. Pag tinignan mo, bogus journals, may listahan na nakapublish. At kapag doon yung nakalagay, wag yun. Kaya nga, magsimula ka muna sa mga pioneering na journals. Yung talagang kilalang journal, pag sinabing, halimbawa, applied linguistics, yan, TESOL quarterly, yan, mga ganyan. Sa, uh, sa, sa field ko yun. Ano. Pero dapat alam niyo sa field na kung sa kayo social science, kung kayo, uh, kung kayo ay physics, ano yung mga journals na yun. Professional books, okay? So, suggested steps for your online search. So, ang dami yung suggestion. Identify the central terms and concepts in your topic. Write a list of keywords based on these terms and concepts. Ang mga published papers ay oh, hinihingan lagi ng, ng keywords. So that pag nag-type kayo at yung mag-hit yung, mag mag yung word na tinype nyo, pag nag-hit yun, matatag yung particular, ano na yun, research article din sa kanilang database, lalabas siya. No, kung ano yung most relevant, ganoon naman ang search engine eh. Even if you go to Google Scholar, for example, and you go to these uh, databases, electronic databases, 
dapat alam mo yung mga terms. Halimbawa, normally, ang mga central terms, edi yung mga variable mo sa research. Halimbawa, ang, ang, ang title mo is um, Bilingual Education in the Philippines. Then and now. Tapos halimbawa, so ano yung mga keywords? Di bilingual education, Philippines, second language acquisition, etc. So doon mo makikita yun, no? Uh, para ma ma makita mo yung mga relevant topics na ano ba yung mga research articles na may kinalaman dun sa keywords na meron ka. Okay? Develop a list of synonyms. So sometimes, hindi lumalabas yung exactong word. So na na natural, hindi mag-i-hit. Ano, hindi siya lalabas. So alamin mo din yung mga synonyms niya. Ano pa yung other terms na ginagamit dun sa keywords na yun. So that, even if it is not the exact word, at least alam mo pa rin yung synonyms. Kapag tinight mo siya, lalabas siya. Okay? Most databases have thesaurus that you can use to find synonyms. So create a list of keywords in order of importance to your research. So naturally, the first one that you write is the most important. Ganun sa listing of keywords. Pag nakita nyo kasi sa mga journals or electronic databases, I'm sorry, abstract keywords. Okay? Those keywords will be tagged. Oftentimes, maximum, I think five, it depends on the journal, five to ten keywords para madaling mahanap kung ano yung related na research sa'yo. Okay? Conduct a database search by starting with the most important keyword. Okay? Kung magsimula ka na, bilingual education. Sa totoo lang mga bata, this work is very tedious. Promise. But you have to be diligent. No? Kung gusto mo talagang mahanap yung best research paper related to your topic, then you have to be diligent and patient in doing these things. Okay? If there are too many results, add a second or third term to narrow your results. Ganun lang yun, para mag-narrow down. Pag marami kasi una, isang hit lang yun. So natural, marami. Then add more. So natural, kung if you match out of five, for example, keywords, three of those keywords match that particular research, chances are it's related to your topic, right? So sa lima mong keywords na sinulat, tatlo doon, kapareho ng isang research, malaki ang chance na halos, par I mean, related sila sa isa't isa. Narrow or broaden the search as needed. No, Almost all databases use basic Boolean commands to narrow or broaden. Ito yung ginagamit na command sa mga databases, yung parang, I don't know if it's an artificial intelligence or parang yung mga ginagamit sa search engine. Meron yan sa library namin sa Lasal. Pag tinype mo yun, para mag-connect connect sa lahat ng lahat ng related na topic. Kasi nag-search ka ng uh, undergraduate thesis or or master thesis. Kapag may type kang words doon, hahanapin niya yon al alin sa mga dates alin sa mga thesis na yun sa database ang merong ganong salita. So narrow or broaden searches the command n between two search keywords narrows the search and the command or broadens the search by allowing synonyms. Pag natural pag sinabi mong n, nabawa ay dalawang words. For the I mean University and, say, ed, educational technology. Kapag end, ibig sabihin, ang command nun, ibig sabihin, dapat both of them must be seen in that particular research. So, ibig sabihin nun, ang hahanapin niya ay research articles or, or any related reference na meron ng dalawang yun. Pero pag or, meaning to say, either of the two, natural, hahanapin niya all of them na may isa lang nun or isa lang nung isa. Okay? It gets you back. Oh, I'm sorry. Another suggestion for locating additional resources on your topic is to examine. If you have a question, you can just perhaps type it in, in our chat box. So, be, so before I proceed, I, I think merong Q&A later. So probably reserved na lang pala yung question. So I'll just finish the discussion. Um, to examine the reference cited by the articles that you did obtain, especially if these articles are recent. Um, Ang ginagawa ko naman ay isa sa isa sa, isa sa ano to eh, sa technique din to. Kapag nakakuha ka na ng magandang uh, RRL na related sa topic mo, tingnan mo yung mga references mo doon. At yun naman ang hanapin mo. Kasi hindi ka na mahirapan. Di ba pag nakakuha ka ng mga let's say 5 or 6 or 10, tingnan mo na yung mga references nila sa likod. Most likely yun din ang reference mo dapat mong basahin. Instead na mag-rely ka dun sa mga yun, kasi secondary source na yun. So kung gusto mo, hanapin mo pa yung mga labasan nila para makuha mo yung primary sources. Ganun lang ginagawa ko. Kapag naka-search na ako ng 5 or 10, hanapin ko na lang yung mga research articles na, nasa, na sinight niya or libro. 
Tapos ganun na lang ginagawa ko para makuha ko na makuha yung mga libro. At makikita mo yung, doon mo rin makikita yung mga pare-parehong reference materials. Kapag lagi siyang sinasight, ibig sabihin, it's either seminal work siya, na dapat mo talagang mahanap. Yung, la, yung lahat ng mat, yung mga pare-parehong uh, references na yun, meaning to say, halimbawa, masampu mong nakuha na research article, uh, eight of them cited this particular research. So meaning to say, seminal work yun or state of the art, ibig sabihin, magandang resource yun, you have to see that also. You have to search and download that reference as well so that you will be able to read it. Hence, primary source na yun. Instead na mag-rely ka lang dun sa mga, sa, sa mga ha, meron ka, na nagigina siyang secondary source. Okay? The articles that you're looking for should, of course, be related to your topic of interest. Yan, be published in a peer-reviewed research journal. Hindi na nga lang peer-reviewed kasi marami na rin peer-reviewed. Kahit mga bogus journal, peer-reviewed na yun. It must be published in a reputable, reputable, peer-reviewed research journal. No? Minsan nga, dapat nga, high impact pa, sinasabi nila. Be published within the last 10 years. Yan. Pag mga studies, mga dapat daw, as suggested, within the last 10 years, kasi na-obsolete naman ang data eh. No? In fact, 5 years from now, may iba na yung result. Perhaps 2 years from now, may iba na yung result. So that's the beauty of research. You can always change, modify, tweak, or even challenge the result of the previous published materials. However, you, cho you may choose to include older references that are highly relevant to your study, have greatly impacted the field, can provide a historical perspective, or are landmark studies. Ito na yung sinasabi kong may exception. Meron kasi mga traditionalists, forgive me, baka, may, baka kung may matamaan, there are traditionalists who will insist on the 10-year. Pag may nakita na silang 1969, ekis, ine-ekis lagad yun ang mga uh, research advisors, it should not be the case. You have to identify whether this 1969 or beyond 10 years materials or references are number one, seminal work. Pwedeng isight yan kapag siyang pangunahin. Seminar, seminal work or what we call pioneering studies. Nat natural, sinasight pa yun. Kaya nga si Vygotsky sinasight pa hanggang ngayon eh. Si na Eric Erickson, kahit ang, tata ang tatanda na si Bloom. Bakit sila sinasight pa rin? Because they are pioneering work. Seminal work sila sa field. No? And if they are state-of-the-art studies, ang ibig sabihin ng state-of-the-art studies, ito yung mga, kumbaga, natatanging study na gumawa. Hindi pa siya nat 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 natutularan ng iba. Siya pa rin yung may ganong method. Okay? So, pwede mo pa rin siyang isight, even if they are published 100 years ago. Historical perspective nga, di ba? Hindi ka lang magsasight when it comes to your results and discussion ng mga matatanda ng studies. Kasi nga, we are talking about results. Okay? So, include articles that discuss the theoretical framework, number one. Kasi kung walang theoretical framework, paano ka mag-guide ngayon in terms of your analysis? Kung walang theoretical underpinning ang iyong research, no, it will fall down. No, theoretical frameworks are like the foundation of your study. No, it is where, kaya siya framework, it is where your study is framed at. No, siya yung para nagiging a uh, shape ng research mo, nagiging guidepost ng research mo. As well as articles that describe research studies on your topic. Now, present different positions or viewpoints when the issue you study is controversial. Yan. You must be academically honest when you discuss these viewpoints. Do not uh, leave behind those viewpoints that do not fit yours. As a researcher, dapat ano ka, intellectually honest, hindi pala academic honest. Intellectually honest ka na Ah, ito po yung pinag, pinagtatalunan nila. So, wag, hindi ka dapat bias over the other. Dapat i-present mo pa rin yan sa, sa iyong research. So, yan dapat. Meron siyang pinipreset na positions, yung mga articles, hindi lang siya bias sa isa. No? Next. Reading literature to identify themes. Now, how do we... Itong, this is very important because when you write RRL, hindi na po tayo... Eh, hindi ko po alam kung anong format sa inyo kasi there are universities still that require their students to divide their chapter two into two. Review, I'm sorry, review of related literature and studies, review of related literature, and nakahiwalay pa yung review of related studies. Or meron namang foreign studies, tapos local studies. I, I, these are old formats na ginagamit ng chapter one to five format. But if you look at the tradition, and not, not the tradition, but 
the current practice in many published articles in in reputable journals they're all discussed thematically you know by themes kumbaga ano yung mga concepts or constructs na importante doon sa research na yun at yun ang dinidiscuss nila kasi mas madaling i-guide mas madaling sulatin kapag naka-thematic siya or thematic style of narrative ang gagawin mo so how do we now identify themes so begin by skimming quickly ayan yung minamaliit na mga bata sa English 00 na skimming scanning paraphrasing summarizing ay ang four basic and very useful macro skills in, in uh, I mean skills in micro skills in English na dapat magamit natin nagagamit natin sa research ngayon lagi sa oh, skimming scanning na yan and then paraphrasing summarizing hindi nila alam these are very important skills in doing research begin by skimming quickly though each are through each article or other documents to get a general idea of its content no basahin mo no skim mo siya hindi kasi nagse-search ka pa lang naman eh i mean meron ka na pa lang article titingnan mo lang yung mga themes so skim mo yung content identify and mark paragraphs or sections that are specifically meaningful for your research there naman tayo we jot down we, we highlight we encircle them no kaya ako i prefer hard copies Totoo lang, I'm, I am just 30 years old. Probably, hindi, siguro hindi, hindi pa ako mukhang 30 years old. But I'm just 30 years old. Para pwede nyo sabihin na bata pa ako. But I prefer hard copies. Old school po ako. Ayaw akong nagbabasa ng nasa laptop kasi nasa agad ng mata ko. At saka, hindi ba ako makapag-scribble ng notes? Hindi ako makapag-underline? Although pwede siyang gawin, no? Uh, electronically. Pero nahihirapan ako. Mas gusto ko parang yung hawa ko. And then I fold the page. <laughs> May put... Uh, some about uh, all these notes yung mga tengang dala na tinatawag niya nilalagyan mo na siya ng mga, uh, mga stickers something like that kaya mas gusto ko hard copy I don't know in your case no, but some of you still pref might prefer soft copies there's nothing wrong with that it, it depends on your uh, it depends kung saan ka masaya or saan ka nagdadalian read and the mark sections again this time slowly and in depth so ang una Niski mo lang, and then kapag niski mo na na, markahan mo na kung ano yun yun, saka mo na siya basahin in depth. And doon mo na siya makikita to pay attention to the themes that emerge in the margin. In the margin, write down the three themes. Alam mo, ah, okay, ang una pa lang theme ay ano, uh, debate about pers perspect uh, perspective, uh, descriptivist or prescriptivist. So, makikita mo doon, the debate. So, doon mo na makukuha ngayon ng mga themes. Okay? And mga themes na yan, dapat recurring themes siya sa lahat, ha? Hindi, hindi porque may isang theme dito, i-include mo sa RRL mo, hindi. It, these themes must be recurring in all the things that you've read. Kapag hindi siya masyadong recurring, you might want to leave it out na kasi baka hindi siya ganun ka-importante kasi hindi siya pinag-uusapan ng lahat. No, kung ito ay mga recurring themes, chances are you have to do the, you have to include that also in your RRL. Take notes on each article as soon as you finish reading it and write a narrative summary of each relevant theme. So, we suggest that for each reference, you use an electronic index card or article thematic review template. I'm going to show you later what the sinasabi ng thematic index card. Include and complete citation on the index card. Ako kasi hindi ako nag index card. Ang ginagawa ko ay... Ano bang ginagawa ko? Sa papel ko siya sinusulat sa... Sa mismo mga article ko din siya sinusulat yung, yung, yung mga publication information para hindi ako mahirapan sa paggawa ng reference later. At uh, it depends kung gusto nyo. May, meron kasi mga researcher na organize eh. I've seen a lot of my classmates in Lasal do this. And ang dali nga naman. Kaso, ano, pag tipo yung kagaya ko yung mga, sabi na global learner, yung hindi masyadong organize, hindi ko masyadong, masyadong nagagawa. But maganda siya for in terms of organization, no, ng content, na RRL mo. So, uh, ano, continued. To summarize each, summarize each theme on the card. Ano yung, ano yung pinag-usapan sa theme na yun? What is it all about? No? The length and the details of the description depend on the importance of the information for study. Kasi ako, mga bata, when I identify a theme, I already write that. Ginadjot down ko lang siya and then I, meron kasi taong ganun yung diretsyo na magsulat kapag naanan niya. Ganun ako magsulat. Tapos, ang ginagawa ko, pag nagsusulat ako, hindi pa siya organized, no? hindi pa siya cohesive. Saka ko lang siya i-arrange into their proper places. Pero basta isusulat ko na siya. Basta nandyan ka lang, medyo sabog. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 na paragraph. Tapos ako lang siya pag sa sama-sama into one cohesive, coherent um, RRL. No? Part ng RRL. Saka ko lang siya sa sama-sama. Pwede naman ganun. That's how I write my own research, my RRL. I don't know how how about you. Kung saan kang comfortable. Um, 
what else? For example, note agreement and disagreement and contrasting or complementary findings. Kailangan mo ding ano yun? Ilang igrupo mo yung mga article? Itong mga article na to, nag-agree sila. Itong mga article na to, nag-disagree sila. Para pag nag-side ka, ang dali mo nang hanapin. O, oh, halimbawa, some of the studies um, disagreed with the result. Tapos, mag-open parenthesis ka na, di ba? Maglalagay ka na ng mga citation doon, ng mga, uh, ng mga sources. So, madali mo na siyang makita. Madali mo na siyang ilagay. Basta i-group mo sa sino yung mga nagsabing neg uh, nag ano nag sabi ng negative sino sabi ng positive kaya importante yung tinatawag nating meta analysis mga bata technically ang 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 tawag dito sa reading, reading literature to identify themes is meta analysis meta analysis ano yun yung comprehensive review na gagawin mo or in i-group mo yung mga uh, research studies na gumamit ng ganitong method nakatabula siya, nakamatrix. Ang bawa ay, Lely Rosa 2020, objective, nandun yung objective niya. Methods na ginamit, result, ano yung result, ano yung recommendation. Doon yung makikita agad yung recurring theme. Kapag minatrix mo siya, isa-isa, makita mo rin sino yung mga study na gumamit ng ganito, gumamit ng ganitong methodology, sino ang nag-experiment, sino nag-qualitative, sino nag-quantitative, sino nag-mix method, anda rin niya makita. Imi-matrix mo siya. I'm gonna later show you this matrix, ano, na suggestion. Note whether the theme was already discussed by another author. Feel free to add any other information that you find useful. Maaring may same finding na kapareho nung sa'yo, pero you might add, no, still to that particular theme. So pwede na yan, kunin mo rin siya. Read each article critically and record your response, agreement, or criticism. Mag-scribble ka na ng note. Ako nagagano'n ko, I don't agree with this finding. Tapos ilalagay mo yung reason mo. Tapos mamaya makikita mo siya. Madali siyang isulat eh. Madali na siyang isulat pag nandun ka na. Pag, pag na-scribble mo na yung notes. The problem is if you do if you have so many scribbled notes, hindi mo na mahanap kung saan mo siya ilalagay. So you have to be careful. Kaya nga, there is an index card where you will put all of these things so that it will be organized. Easier to understand, easier to see, and easier to collate. Consider the following issues. How was the research paradigm identified? Were terms adequately defined? Was there sufficient information about the research setting, participants, data collection, procedures, and findings? So, kasi mga bata, when you do related literature, hindi mo lang siya inuunawa, kinikriticize mo rin siya at the same time. When I say criticize, hindi mo siya nilalait, ila-analyze mo siya, ay, parang hindi ata mag- parang unti ng respondents niya, tatlo lang. Ay, bakit hindi siya nag-triangulate? Hindi siya nag-focus group discussion. Okay? Kasi magiging argument mo rin yan later on. Uh, the, the reason probably this study did not yield the same result because the previous studies did not use focus group discussion unlike the researcher. Okay? Doon may mga argument. Lahat yan magagamit mo when you formulate, when you theorize, when you formulate your own assumptions in chapter 4, in your conclusions, in your recommendations, and in your results in discussion. Okay? Ano pa? Yun. So be meticulous. If you, if you identify a very strong or unique statement that you want to quote, quote it precisely and don't forget to include the page numbers and other publication information. Uh, napagalitan ako before when I was writing. Kasi lahat na lang daw doon kinote ko. Sabi, poor D, hindi naman lahat ikukot. Sabi, kasi ang ganda kasi ma'am. Ang para I don't feel like editing it or paraphrasing it. Sabi, no. Just quote the most striking parts. Kasi medyo lazy daw yung quote ng direct quote ng direct ng quote. Sabi ko, ma'am, ang ganda kasi pag binago ko, no. Sabi niya, no. Uh, in fact, it is a sign of intelligence when you paraphrase the author's idea. No? Tama nga naman, ano, because you want to present the author's idea in a different way but still the same meaning, right? Kaya ako, ang hindi ko mag-quote. Sabi, nako, that's a lazy, lazy. I don't know if, if it is that's the, that, that's the case uh, with some of you, no, if you direct quote, meron daw lang daw talagang select few na talagang quotable na quotes. No? Pero pag striking talaga siya, and if you don't feel like editing it, or if you don't feel like paraphrasing it, and there's no way of saying it, edi, direct quote mo na siya. No? Ibig sabihin, maganda yung pagkakas pagkakasulat niya. No? From time to time. So ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na na ano, na tight na pwede mong gawin sa team sa yan. So, may index card ka, title of article, author, journal, your publication. At the same time, para rin siyang reference card, no? 
ng index card, kung madali mo na siyang mahanap. Ito yung uh, DOI or Digital Object Identifier, Summary Team 1, Summary of Team 2, team, team 3, etc. Et okay? Sorry, para akong hinahabol. So, yan. Constructing Literature Review Outline. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Yung authors, date of publication, themes discussed. In fact, pwede kang gumawa ng sarili ng matrix. Eh. It depends on what kind of information do you want to see. Ang ginagawa ko sa meta-analysis, eh, minimatrix ko siya in such a way na author, date of publication, objective, methodology, major result, number of participants, age of participants, Yon, something like that. Yun yung mga data na ginagawa ko para mabilis siyang masynthesize, mabilis siyang maggroup, mabilis siyang malaman kung which among these studies corroborate your results, which do not. Okay? So ito yung pwede mong gawin. Now let's now proceed to constructing a literature review outline. It can be written in narrative style no? or bullets. It depends on you. Mas maganda siguro narrative para diretso mo na siyang isulat. Pero there are times naman na bullets, mas gusto ng iba na bullets. Ako naman, I prefer bullets kasi gawa ng, basta maalala ko madali, basta may word nandun, madali ko na siyang maalala kung ano yung dapat kong isulat. Analyze the similarities and differences between the themes, sub-themes, and turn them into topics and sub-topics. O pwede mo siyang gawing, ta o the debate between A and B, something like that. It can be your topic and sub-topic. It can be the theme of your own RRL. No? Make sure you record the names of the authors next to each team. Huwag kalilimutan. Also, consider multiple perspectives and approaches presented by different authors on the same topic or subtopic. Again, maaring the same topic sila but they have different takes on the issue. No, May isa, going on a social linguistic side. Yung isa naman, medyo language education side. Yung isa naman, something like that. It depends. No, Medyo political, postmodern ang take niya post method or pre colonial it depends on the kind of thinking no kasi may among author medyo biased din naman yan no? may bias yan in terms of of the knowledge that they have the way they see things in fact yung alam natin makes us makes us bias towards other things no against other things sabi nga ng isang author no also consider ayan this agreement compare and contrast research findings and conclusions walang masama hindi po kasalanan na kakaiba ang result ng research mo. Yung iba kasi mga bata na tatakot, Sir, hindi po kami, hindi po pareho yung aming research. Sa, eh, di maganda, di ba? Ibig sabihin, may something new kang i-offer. Kasi sa sampung research article, ikaw lang ang hindi nag-yield ng same result. What is wrong with your research? Or what is different with your research? Tama naman ang methodology mo. Tama naman ang respondents mo. So, ano ngayon ang i-offer mo? And that's the time when you contribute to the current pool of knowledge. Doon ka na magsasabi, magsa-theorize ka na, magbibigay ka ng mga recommendation that were not tackled or said before or indicated before or written before in the previous RRL. So pwede ka na ngayon gawing RRL ng mga researchers na gusto mag-study sa sarili mong area. Okay, di ba? Masaya. Isa-site ka na. Decide on the logical order of your themes and sub-themes. Paano mo siya? Yan ang challenge. How are you going to organize them? Remember mga bata, RRL is not just a comprehensive review but it is a co comprehensive and coherent cohesive review of related literature. Hindi mo lang siya in-extrapulate o oh, team, themes, themes, themes. But how these themes are related to each other, still you have to use transitional devices no? para matahi mo siya one paragraph to the next. No? It, it might be independent to each other but it must connect to each other no in such a way that they present a cohesive uh, RRL para for better understanding kasi kung first paragraph o oh, team A kasi iba hindi mo naman siya may connect sa team yung yung team B hindi mo naman siya ma connect sa team A ang hirap basahin ang gulo sa bog so kung ako ang reviewer noon most likely hindi na siya mapapublish no uh, decide the, the rule of thumb is constructing the literature review outline is that issues least related to your own research focus are discussed first. Kapag wala pa lang, hindi siya masyadong uh, related, discuss mo siya na una para ma maliit lang yung discussion mo. Tapos magbigay, mag, ano ka, magbigay, maglaan ka ng malaking oras, malaking panahon sa pag-discuss ng mga RL na may kinalaman sa'yo. Kasi natural, siya yung related sa'yo. Pinaka may meet. No? So you have to give more time and make it as the last part of your discussion. Additionally, it makes sense to organize items from the general to specific, from historical to contemporary, from theory to practice, and from definitions to examples. Kung gusto mo ay deductive, ang style mo, or inductive, it depends on you, no? Pero sabi nila general to specific. Ngayon ko say, 
deductive. Kung from general to specific. Next. I hope you are, you, you can follow, no? So, the next discussion. Oh, naghang. Wait lang. So, medyo naghang po yung aking. Uh, I already consumed much of the time. I think I already, one hour is only allotted for me. No. Oh. So, excuse. I am sorry, sorry. My little play down to the floor. Okay, so I, I just have four more slides. I'm so sorry. So, okay. Okay, let's proceed to the next. So now let's proceed to writing the literature review. Now the writing proper. <laughs> Para mas tedious yung preparing to write. Tedious din yung writing, no? Tedious din yung writing. Pero sa mga language major, I think, um, medyo bias ako pasensya na. Sa writing, siguro hindi sila masyadong mag-challenge. No? Ako, pinaka-challenge talaga ako when it comes to preparing the literature review. Sa writing naman, sasanay ka na rin eh kung, kung marami ka talagang experience in literature review. For example, sinabi ko nga sa inyo, I always, uh, I always use the historical uh, perspective style of reviewing literature. Although still thematic. So there's no single format for writing a literature review. So wala pong format. No? Wala po talagang nire-require. Kahit talong yung si Swales, si John Swales, nag-study siya comprehensively, kinumpare niya ang iba't ibang uh, research articles published in different fields of science, hard science, social sciences, physical science, etc. Wala pong standard no, ng uh, writing. Meron ng perceived standard ang mga reviewer or ang mga particular research article or journals no pero pag kung, uh, kung meron kung meron talagang practice ang isang research journal why not di alamin mo muna kung ano yung prescription ng journal na gusto mong pagsubmitan pero there is no overarching single standard format okay and the structure generally emerges from the nature of the particular li literature that is reviewed. Notwithstanding mga bata, although thematic, notwithstanding each author has their own style. Hindi natin mawawala yun sa mga writer. Kung meron silang style of their own, talagang maaano yun. Lalabas at lalabas. At makikita nyo yun pag nagbasa kayo. Ah, iba, iba talaga siya magsulat. Uh, Malawa, may isang author na talagang siya nagsusulat dun sa siya yung pioneering, dun, pioneering scholar sa air, research area. Makikita mo kung paano siya magsulat. Ah, ganito pala siya magsulat. Next. However, there are usually three main sections. I will be discussing them one by one later on. Uh, please tell me if I don't have time anymore. I'm going to stop the presentation. Parang napahaba po ata ako. I'm really, really sorry. So, yes, sir, however, yes, uh, however, there are usually three main sections. An introduction, the main section of the review, and a, and a summary and concluding remarks that end with a specific research question. I'll be discussing them one by one. Ano ba nakalagay doon? Madali na lang po. So remember, the arguments you make in the literature review section of your research report cannot be based on your personal opinion and beliefs. Okay, again, it must be supported and corroborated by previous results. And at least somehow you must be uh, intellectually honest enough to say and to do to, to make hedging devices yung parang, uh, based on the limited uh, resources or based on the limited data that we have, we can somehow say mga ganun, na hedging devices to say na hindi kayo ganun ka absolutely sure of the results. It's okay to be tentatively sure, no? Sabi nila, it's okay not to be sure in research kasi i-claim mo siya na wala namang uh, backing or evidence, okay? Every idea, proposition, or assertion needs to be supported by evidence. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, such as citation from a credible article. Dapat supported yan ng, ng, ng previous studies. On the other hand, do not accept studies findings blindly. Hindi po kasi sinabi nila, okay lang sa'yo, publish naman yan sa Cambridge, eh. tama yan, no. As a, as, as, a, as a researcher and as a scholar, you have the right to even question it to the bare minimum in terms of methodology, in terms of the result. You know? Read critically to ensure that your arguments are supported by trustworthy theory and data. Okay, where possible, assess the studies that you review, noting their strengths and weaknesses. That's according to both. For example, meron kami, meron ang citation dito. Diba? So, hindi mo lang siya sinasabi, but 
you have to support it by studies, meaning to say, ah, oh, okay, napag-aralan na siya. Okay, so meron siyang credibility in that sense. Uh, suggestions in writing the literature review. The literature review is devoted to a review of published studies conducted by others. You may express your own opinion and criticize studies. However, the literature review is not an editorial or opinion page. Baka naman sobrang nag-focus ko sa criticism or sa mga lapses ng research ng literature review mo, bagay na siyang editorial ano, or opinion page. It's not. No? Every idea presented in the review must be attributed to some to someone using a citation. Alam naman natin to, no? that every idea that is not your own must be attributed. No? That there must be citation. You must cite the original author, such as this one. I did not write this. Uh, you're going to see my, the references at the end of this presentation from where this information came from. To avoid plagiarism, be sure to cite the sources for your ideas and arguments rather than present them as your own. Plagiarism might be your ticket to expulsion. I don't, I don't know in your in university whether it is a ticket for expulsion, but plagiarism is one one way of getting kicked out you know, in your university. Every citation you make in the text of your review must appear in full in the reference list at the end of the paper. Basic naman yan. Alam kong na, uh, siguro naturo naman na sa inyong APA, no? Sixth edition, we have in-text citation and we have parenthetical references within the paper, but we also have end notes and bibliography and reference section where the full disclosure of the references that we have, it's public publisher, date of publication, number of pages, name of journal, title, authors are disclosed there, are written there. Para ma-search din naman ang mga, uh, mga future researchers. Follow a standard citation format such as APA style. Meron tayong 7th edition. No, meron na tayong APA publication manual 7th edition. You can go to APA website www.apastyle.org no, to see the new uh, formats or the additional uh, sources na pwede nyo kuha ng, ng inyong data. Abbreviations should be explained and defined when they are first introduced. Alam naman natin sa APA standard that if the abbreviation starts, I mean, appears first in the paper, it must be spelled out. Okay? Suggestions in writing the literature review continued. It is good idea to have another set of, ayan, nasulat mo na. You have to have another eye to read your paper. Peer review na yan. Pero hindi pa yan peer review, pero ask someone to read your paper so that you will see, ah, yun, may kulang ka pa dito. Ito, mali. Kasi it makes your research, your, uh, your, pay, your, your, your literature better. Ako, ganun ako. Even po sa Facebook na hindi ako sure sa grammar, I asked my friends, tama ba to? Tama ba to? So, it's good to have a third eye, no? A third party reading your paper. Honest third party. Pag kasi, pagkaibigan kasi, ay, okay naman, pero, alam mo yun, when it comes to, to, ano, to research review, you have to be honest. Walang kaibigan-ibigan. So you have to tell them, oh, problematic tong section na to. Oh, kulang ka sa argument na to. Oh, this needs citation. So ganun yun. Yun ang maganda sa uh, you let other people, another expert, read your work. So meron ako ditong simple assessment na pwede mong gawing checklist para masabi na maganda na yung RRL mo. So is there an introduction to the review that indicates, hindi ko na siya iisa-isahin, I'll be giving you naman the PowerPoint, I'll be giving all you also the soft copy of the book that I, I used you might want to have it kasi napakaganda po niya. I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna send the PDF to Ma'am Nia to, para ma-share po niyo sa mga kasamahan niyo at sa mga bata. So ito po yung parts, no? Introduction. Dito, ibibigay mo, uh, you're just going to, to give an overview of what the literature review will be, what, the, what does it contain, no? And what is the inspiration why such uh, review of liter literature was written. Okay, So terms are explained and defined unless these terms are introduced and clarified in the problem statement section. So natural, yung main section na is nandun na yung theme mo. Doon mo na siya isusulat. Nandun na yung pinakamahabang part, yung mga, pinag yung mga scribbled notes mo, yung mga themes na sub-themes, sub-topics na sinunat mo, dito mo na siya ilalagay. Okay? The main section of the review follows the outline structure and is organized thematically. Under each subtopic, discuss the appropriate theories or studies. Depending upon the significance of the source to your own study, the discussion can be a brief 
or can, can be brief or lengthy. It depends on you. Sabi ko nga, kung hindi siya importante, brief lang. Kapag talagang pertinent siya sa yung study, lengthy ang discussion mo dyan. In the beginning of the main section of your review, you may briefly state a theme or propose an argument. No, and then cite references to support your assertion. Okay, for example, nagbigin ako ng ano, nag, nagsimula ako sa isang RL na in the past decades, the study of ganyan ganyan has been greatly greatly reviewed. However, there 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 still need to ganyan ganyan something like that. So you you may begin with an argument. You should communicate to the reader how the studies fit together, or how they are related to each other. How this study relates to the other, what makes a difference? You know, spot the weaknesses and strengths of these studies. Point out controversies, agreements, and disagreements among researchers. So some school of thought believe that, however, there are new budding scholars that says uh, that, that say otherwise. That say otherwise, no? When different authors are in agreement, do not restate the point, but present it once and the reference all the authors. Okay. And the summary, of course, dito mo na, dito na po tatahiin. In other words, uh, i-close mo na yung, yung mga arguments mo. No? I-summarize mo yung ano yung review mo dun sa unang part. And then, wag kalilimutan that in the summary, the major themes across all studies reviewed and their implications need to be highlighted. It, so, dun mo masasabi na it can be seen from the literature review that there is seemingly lacking interest of research along this area. Hence, this study would like to inquire. Kaya dun kalimitan sinasegway yung gap ka summary and concluding remark. Dun sinasegway yung gap, dun nasasabi yung importance ng study, and dun na foreground yung importance ng study, ng current study mo. Here, nakalagay dito, you can also point out the limitations of the current knowledge and recognize unresolved issues na gusto mong sagutin or remaining questions na hindi pa natatouch ng mga previous researchers. Kaya gusto mong mag-research sa area na yun. Your concluding remarks provide the rationale for formulating your study-specific questions by identifying the need of your study. Like what I've said, you segue the gap at yun ay nagiging rationale. Hence, this study is highly opportune because there has not been any single research published in the last 20 years that would discuss and tackle this particular research topic. Yun na, nasegue mo na. Okay? I'm afraid that the last part, no, knowing all this, result uh, this solves half of your research problem <laughs> kapag na master mo to no? madali nang sulatin ang research and these are my references like what i've said i'm going to give you the main the main reference that i use actually is this one the last part efron and david etc and if you have any questions i'm now willing to take them um thank you very much sir for your, for sharing your insights and expertise to us. So guys, I guess whenever we do our research, we have to do the review of related literature first because like what our dearest speaker have mentioned earlier, the formulation of our problem usually comes from it. In conclusion, we really have to do a lot of readings. Um, so anyways, at this moment for our open forum, we are now open to accommodate questions from the participants regarding the discussion. Kindly comment down your questions via Facebook live stream or send them via the Zoom meeting chat box. Once again, if you have any questions regarding the discussion, kindly comment down your questions via Facebook live stream or send them via the Zoom meeting chat box. Um, sir, my yeah. question for from... From Miss Anisa Binito Ahmad, her question is: Does all cited information indicated in the intro theoretical framework, so chapter one should also appear or discuss yes. in chapter two? Uh, in chapter, I mean, once again, in chapter po, one. Uh, ang question po kay: Does all cited information indicated in the intro theoretical mm -hmm. framework, so chapter one should also appear? Uh, or discuss in chapter two, po? No, uh, technically it's no longer part of the chapter two, okay? Because you already mentioned that. Unless there is another pertinent discussion or pertinent theme that you might want to reiterate that particular uh, author or citation, you can put, you can still put it. But all the all the authors, all the re references cited from the beginning at the end of the research must appear in your reference section. That's what I know. Okay. Hey.
Uh, then, thank you very much, sir. Another question okay. po kay... Question. From Miss Anisa Binito Akmad again. <laughs> How many ideal minimum number of related studies to be cited to be cited in an undergraduate thesis thesis? Yeah, actually, there's there's no standard. It depends on the teacher. That uh, and it depends on the nature of the study. Like what I've said, if the the research is a well studied one. No, naturally, it would require a lot of readings. In in fact, some of ako nag require ako before ng at least thirty research articles. No, that that excludes the seminal works. But you know, sometimes it's far fetched. Kasi makita mo naman, uh, kahit sobrang dami na pare pareho lang naman. So, isang isang ano yan, isang talent yan ng researcher is to know which studies are just you know the same. No, pare pareho, and they 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 must know how to spot the state of the art ones the ones that are really um important so i don't i cannot give a certain amount it depends on the teacher and it depends whether ako as an evaluator i'm convinced that I, that you have put the important studies in your rl i hope i was able to address the question yes po, sir thank you very much so is there are there any other questions for from the participants Meron ba? Um, I guess parang wala pong other question but then so for the participants uh, if you have any further questions regarding the discussion please do not hesitate to send it to our Facebook page MSU Young Researchers Club para i-address lang po namin kay Sir Fernand. And we will get back to you then po as soon as possible. Ah, yeah. That so, at this juncture, allow me to present the e-certificate of our research speaker as an appreciation to him sharing his wisdom with us today. Mindanao State University College of Education, Marawi City Department of Secondary Teaching, Office of the Research and Extension Services, said Young Researchers Club present the Certificate of Recognition to Professor Ferdinand L. Relio Rosa in grateful recognition and appreciation of his lofty thoughts, brilliant ideas, and rich experiences shared with the topic crafting the review of related literature during the third College of Education, Department of Secondary Teaching, Office of the Research and Extension Services, said Young Researchers Club lecture series held on November 21, 2020, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. via Zoom, signed by Dr. Florencio D. Ricoletto, Jr., our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs and Dr. Montilla Jamila D. Sarib, our Dean of College, and Professor Lotes D. Dagisonan, Chair, Secondary Teaching Department, Dr. Warda D. Gimba, Research Coordinator and YRC Senior Advisor, Professor Rosnia G. Tamano, Extension Coordinate, Coordinator and YRC Junior Advisor, and finally, Ms. Raihani Impangkoga, YRC President. Thank you. Thank you very. Thank you very much for the time. It was it was an honor to be yes, part sir. of this. I hope you learned something from the lecture. Pasensya na medyo. I thought I'm gonna finish by one hour because I just limited the presentation to twenty slides. Anyway, if you have any questions, I'm willing to uh, to answer them. Uh, just ask Mam Nia if you have further questions. And by the way, I'm gonna send Mam Nia the soft copy of the book that I use if you want. No. By the oh, way, okay, I'm, I'm going to say thank, thank you, you to much, my sir. friend also is watching right now, Sir Mikael Dino. He, he, he participated <laughs> in the webinar. He was a supportive friend. <laughs> Hi, Dino. Thank you. Thank you, po. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Mindanao State okay. University. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Po, po.
Well, pong salamat. As, as a reminder, uh, okay po, sir. <laughs> as a reminder din po for our dearest participants, we'll be sending out your e-certificates via email after filling out the post-evaluation form that will be just posted via Zoom meeting, chat box, and via Facebook page. And as we are now approaching the close, part of today's event may we request everyone to kindly turn on your cameras for the photo opportunity Bye. may we also request uh the superhero of the team our beloved moderator sir fernando r Sequeta jr to help us facilitate in taking our photo Bye. okay you can open your camera everyone <laughs> Hello po. I am sorry I cannot open my camera and then maulan, sobrang maulan dito sa amin. Okay lang po ma'am. Sayang ko walang okay. pandemic, I, I could have been there personally. <laughs> oh my God, sasali na lang ako. Hi sir. <laughs> Okay, everyone, let's have a... Okay, ready, smile, everyone. One, two, three. Another. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you much, po. sir. Thank you so much, po, sir. Okay, I guess that concludes our webinar for today. We hope that you have enjoyed gaining knowledge from this webinar. Indeed, we are not born already knowledgeable in everything. We are born to learn. We hope to see you again in our next webinar. Once again, thank you very much, Sir Fernando, for sharing your wisdom to us. And thank you, everyone, for your virtual presence. Um, as, a rem as a final reminder as well to the participants, we will be giving a certificate only to those who have completed the webinar and filled out the post evaluation form that will be provided via zoom meeting and facebook page once again this is the third webinar source of the young researchers club crafting the review of related literature recultivating enthusiasm for research learning in the new normal thank you and have a nice day to everyone thank you Hi everyone, thank you so much. So, hindi na po tayo naka-live.